Hi there, this is Steve of BB Circuits. After several years of using the Multicop MP7187 power supply, programmable power supply, I'm here to do a thorough and honest review of its features as well as describe how to use it. The Multicop MP71087 programmable power supply is a single output, affordable, adjustable, 60 volt, 3 amp linear power supply. It's very useful if you want precision down to one millivolt and one milliamp control of voltage and current when performing electronic design, prototyping, and other functions where such resolution is desired. You can directly program the target values before activating the output. Once you're ready, you can press the blue button to energize the circuit. This power supply is loaded with features. Here's a list of them, and I'm going to go through these step by step in this video. Setup of the supply is easy. Suppose I want to set the voltage level. I will use these arrow keys here and get to the significant digit that I want. If I want 10 volts output, I will use the turn the knob until I reach 10 volts. If I wanted to set this for say 1.5 amps, use the down arrow key, adjust that for one, go to the right to the next least significant digit. Turn that up to five. Now we have 10 volt output with a 1.5 volt limit. If I press this blue button here, the enable button, that enables the output. Now, as you can see, I've got a load on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that load. And it is set now at uh, approximately 10 volts, but it is limited to 1.5 amps. If I put this load back on, this just happens to be a resistor here. 12 ohm resistor, you can see it's limiting it to 1.5 5 amps output, but it has to reduce the voltage down to 1.9 or 5 volts in order to do that. So that's the basic operation of this supply. In order to test the voltage output accuracy, I set it to 10 volts and tested it up, tested it against the Fluke 115 multimeter, and it fell within the 0.5% DC voltage accuracy as claimed in the specifications. Voltage regulation. In testing the voltage regulation, I put a load on the power supply. This test shows the regulated voltage output with a load on it. I was able to determine that the voltage reading on the power supply and of the Fluke 115 were within 0.025% of each other, which falls within the claimed specifications of this supply. Current regulation. This test was conducted using a random low resistance load, which is a cooktop burner of about 40 ohms, and set up a maximum current to one amp. The supply regulated the current to exactly that and correspondingly dropped the voltage output to 40 volts in order to meet that requirement. Current measurement. In this test, I set the voltage output for five volts and connected it to a 12 ohm power resistor. In series with that circuit was the Fluke 115 measuring inline current. As you can see, the current measurement on the Fluke 115 as compared to that on the power supply were within one milliamp of each other. It's known as over voltage and over current protection. So this overrides any other settings that you may have. So this is sort of an overarching limit on your output. So you would get to that by pressing the down arrow key, get down to here. Suppose I uh, never want to go over 12 volts and I never want to go over three amps. So that means, and you can just adjust these the way that you would adjust this one up here. You just take the arrow keys and get to the digit that you want. Just turn the knob to adjust it. So this means I'll never go over 12 volts and I'll never go over three amps unless I change it up here. If I'm, if I'm making some settings and if I inadvertently go over that limit, what will happen, so if I go to 13 volts and I'll hit the enable. So I just I inadvertently went over the overarching limit and it sounded alarm and, and the power supply just shut down. So that's the over voltage and over current protection settings. Quick mention of electrical noise regarding this power supply. I was not able to detect any electrical noise above the noise floor of my oscilloscope. And that noise floor was just above the claimed maximum noise of this power supply. 
This power supply has a rudimentary graphing feature. All you do, uh, do is just press the OK button when you're in the normal mode. It'll take you to this graphing feature. The y-axis defaults to amperage, which is the maximum current output of the supply right there. If you want the y-axis to be voltage, you just press the up key, and then the y-axis will be the maximum voltage output of the supply, which is 60 volts. The x-axis is 60 seconds. It appears to be fixed at that. So I'll go ahead and press the enable button. It'll enable a current a voltage output. Right now the voltage is very low. because I've got a um, 12 ohm resistor on there and it is limited. And then there's your display right there. It also has a display available on top. You can actually even adjust this too. You can actually adjust these limits while you're in the graphing feature. So all you gotta do is just go up and um, start turning the knob here and you can adjust these limits. And you can toggle over to whatever digit you want to, adjust accordingly. I'm gonna put this on amperage so you can see the, there you go, you can see the graph of current. It's a current graph over time, over a span of 60 seconds. So that's a rudimentary graphing feature of this supply. Press the OK button, get back to the normal display. Here's an example of how to use the memory locations on this. Press the memory button, and it gives you a summary of your stored locations. If you want to select one of these, you press the up or down key, and it'll highlight the different memory locations, and if that's the one you want, you're going to press the OK button, and then your power supply will assume those values. If you want to edit these, go back to memory. There's the edit right there. Turn the knob to the right. It takes you to where you can edit them. Use the up or down key until one of the parameters is highlighted, and then you can just use the up or down key or right or left key to get to the parameter that you'd like to change. If you'd like to change memory to, if you'd like to change the voltage to, you highlight it, then you can turn the knob to adjust them, adjusting it to two volts. And the current, press the down key. I want to change it to one amp. Use the knob to get to the significant digit that you want. Change it to one amp. And then if I press, press the memory key. So that's how you can use and edit the memory locations. So a key lock feature. Key lock feature here, you press the key lock button, hold it for three seconds, and the display uh, shows a little padlock right there. That means that uh, you're, you're basically your power supply is disabled so that nobody can fool with it. So if I try to press something, it's going to sound an alarm. No matter what I do, it's going to sound an alarm. Unless I want to disable the key lock feature, in which case I would just press that button for three seconds. Padlock goes off, and I can go back to normal usage of the supply. Okay. This power supply does have data connectivity capability. There are a couple of ports on the back here. One is a USB port, and one is an RS-232. There's an API, apparently, uh, that you can use to access this power supply and control it via software. So that's uh, another feature that's probably not very well known. And I believe the API is available online. Now this power supply does have a cooling fan. It's a linear supply. And that cooling fan does get a little bit noisy. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and uh, I'm going to draw 7 watts off of it. I'm going to have a supply of 7 watts. And the fan is already starting to kick in. I'll go ahead and pause the video and wait until it cranks up. So it can be heard on the video. I don't know if you can hear that in the video, but that's the cooling fan. It's starting to really ramp up. It's loud enough to hear in the next room, but this is really a whole lot different than what I've experienced with other power supplies of its type. Pros. This power supply is loaded with features at a low price. 
has high resolution voltage and current settings, one millivolt and one milliamp respectively, a rudimentary graphing feature, over voltage protection and current protection features, five memory locations, it's a low noise linear supply, it has an enable and disable button that allows you to withhold power to your circuit until you're ready. Some of the cons, voltage limit setting varies from the voltage output reading by several millivolts. This isn't really a problem and you can make a slight adjustment to the set voltage to compensate. It's a single output supply, but for the price, it's loaded with features. If you want to have a triple output supply, you can easily daisy chain these supplies since they are floating. The fan is kind of noisy. In fact, when it's at its noisiest, you can hear it in the next room. This really is much different than other linear supplies that I tested. In summary, overall, this is a great power supply for the bench at a good price. It's full featured and smartly designed. It has high resolution voltage and current settings and over voltage and over current protection limits as well. Easy to access memories and rudimentary graphing capabilities. The most handy feature I've found, however, is the blue enable and disable button which allows for quick circuit revisions without disconnecting from the power supply. If you're interested in purchasing this power supply, there's a link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.